And we are live from the WEIU TV studios and we are back with another Our Story. It is Jasper County. This is Our Story. I'm Ramin Karbassian. And I'm Key Ann Armstrong. We are so happy to shine the spotlight on Jasper County tonight. This is Jasper County. This is Our Story. We're live in the WEIU TV studio. We have so many friends with us here tonight. We're here on July 18th for our 17th Hour Story, 16 storytellers, and I'm being biased here, telling 15 amazing stories on Jasper County. They are amazing, and you can watch on multiple platforms this evening. We are live here over the air. We're on cable. We're on satellite. We're streaming on multiple platforms, whether it's the PBS app, uh, Local Now, our website, Facebook, YouTube, you name it. We're out there, and you can watch it anywhere in the world tonight. We are everywhere. We have Jason Werfel behind us, and he's going to kick off the program tonight telling us how Jasper and Newton got their names. So don't go anywhere. This is Jasper, Jasper County. County. This, this is, is our, our story. story. Jasper County, this is our story on WEIU is brought to you in part by Apex Clean Energy was founded with a singular focus to accelerate the shift to clean energy. More information about how Apex Clean Energy is available at apexcleanenergy.com. Apex is proud to support Jasper County. This is our story on WEIU. Thank you to the storytellers from Jasper County from Apex Clean Energy. The Embraer River Tourism Council is a committee of volunteers who promote the growth of tourism and economic development in the Jasper County area. The Embraer River Tourism Council salutes all the champions and storytellers making Jasper County This Is Our Story possible. More information is available about the Embraer River Tourism Council at visitjaspercountyil.org. People's State Bank of Newton, the oldest financial institution in Jasper County, is a proud supporter of Jasper County. This is our story. We acknowledge all of our storytellers and community members who made this show possible on WEIU. Enjoy the show from your friends at People's State Bank, member FDIC. EJ Water Cooperative is honored to help bring you Jasper County. This is our story on WEIU. EJ Water thanks all of the stories and storytellers for making this show a reality. More information about EJ Water available at ejwatercoop.com. Jasper County, This Is Our Story is partially supported by a grant from the Illinois Arts Council, a state agency. None of us get to pick our names but our names throughout our life come to define who we are and we come to define them. And it's the same thing with Jasper and Newton. These names were not chosen by people that lived here, but we as a community have come to define them over the years. On February 15, 1831, the Illinois legislature meeting in Vandalia, the state capital at the time, selected a new county to be formed from the western part of Crawford County and a sliver of the northeastern part of Clay County. And the Illinois legislature determined that the name of this new county should be called Jasper, and the county seat, which was gonna be located in the geographic center of the county, would be named Newton. Now the names Newton and Jasper might seem just random names, but at this time, they were very popular names. In fact, the time that Jasper and Newton were chosen here in Illinois, between 1820 and 1850, more than 60 Newton and Jaspers popped up across the country. And more than half of them share some common 
boundary. So they're either neighboring counties or it's a county and a county seat, but there's a connection there. And this connection is not random. This all stems from an author at the time, Parson Weems or Marion Weems, as he was known. And while we might not today know that name, we know some of his stories. So Parson Weems, in his first biography, wrote about George Washington and the cherry tree story. This was meant to be a moral tale for the youth of the country to talk about honesty. In his second book, Parson Weems detailed General Francis Marion and the 2nd South Carolina Infantry Regiment during the Revolutionary War. It was in the pages of that book that he would talk about the exploits of two sergeants, Sergeant Jasper and Sergeant Newton. One of the stories told in that book recount how Sergeant Jasper and Sergeant Newton led a daring rescue, just the two of them, to rescue a bunch of captured Americans, women and children included, from British soldiers. This story at the time was taken to be gospel by the American people. So these romanticized stories compelled many towns and villages and counties across the country to be named after Newton and Jasper. The only problem is, according to the individual who Parson Weems got the stories from, they're largely fictitious. Now, Sergeant Jasper himself was a Revolutionary War hero, but the story of Sergeant Jasper Newton rescuing these captured Americans is completely fictitious. There's no real evidence to back any of that up, and it was more or less written to tell a story. Nonetheless, states like Illinois, other states around the country would adopt these names. And 200 years later, the origins of the name Newton and Jasper are largely a footnote in history, especially around here. But over that 200 years, the thousands of people that have called Jasper County home that have lived here have come to define Jasper County for themselves. We are a community instilled with the essential American values. We are hardworking, fiercely independent people who rally around each other in hard times and celebrate good times with one another. Over the course of this program, you will hear stories of how the people, individuals of our community have come to define Jasper County and Newton, Illinois as ourselves. And this is our story. In the uh, history of France back in the early 1800s, uh, Napoleon and all of the, uh, the guillotine and all that stuff that goes with it uh, was affecting this area. Uh, the uh, people there were uh, very, uh, how can I say, they were not happy with the way things were going. They were very conservative Catholics. They did not like the government telling them what to do. They were uh, people of means, business people, farmers. Uh, they were uh, rebels, according to the Napoleonic uh, government. So life for, for them was not all that certain. They began looking for some place to go to be what they wanted to do. Uh, one of the uh, family had been reading James Fenimore Cooper, stories about the United States, the, uh, the Wild West, uh, the countryside, and uh, a light went on and they decided they needed to investigate. How can we settle there? They sent two 19-year-old boys in 1835 to explore the United States, to find out, find a place, where are we going to settle? Uh, these boys eventually ended up at St. Louis, but they had been told, stay away from big cities. These people were independent. They wanted to do things their way. So they started backtracking back to the uh, east and the area where St. Marie in the southern, southern Jasper County uh, they decided on that, we think, for two reasons. One, the area looks a lot like where they came from. Rolling hills, the um, chances for planting uh, a good river there, the Ambra, the, um, the forest to, to be able to build things with. And um, the only thing missing from their homeland, in this homeland to theirs, was there were no mountains off in the distance. Because when you're in Alsace, off in the distance you can see the foothills of the Alps beautiful area. The other reason we think, and probably the biggest reason, was that 
Vincennes had a very strong Catholic community. They had a bishop there, they had priests who could travel the area, which meant that they could have a priest come through at least once a month and say Mass, which was a, a very big deal for them. In 1835, these two boys went back home, gave the report to the uh, elders. Now, there were basically five families that uh, had decided they're going to form an association. There was a formal agreement written up, uh, contracts were signed, they each put in 50,000 francs a piece. Uh, in today's money, that figures out to $181,000 a piece. These people were people of, of substance. In uh, June of 1837, they came to the United States. Three of the men went to um, Palestine where the land office was, and they entered and bought 12,000 acres of ground in Jasper County. Bought it from Uncle Sam for a buck and a quarter an acre. 25 people came over with them in this original uh, group and uh, they came to St. Marie in October of 1837. The land came on the river, the Ambra, and the, uh, on the bluff above the river, they claimed this land for the family, dedicated it to the Blessed Virgin, sang Salve Regina and fired off their muskets, all very formal. The original name of the, of the group was supposed to be Colonie des Frères, which translated means Colony of Brothers because all 25 who came over at the time were either related by blood or by marriage. Uh, th this changed because partly the Germans started coming in. They weren't brothers, uh, but the uh, town was officially, name was changed to St. Marie. And it's very unusual because it's S-T-E period Marie, which is the feminine form of saint in uh, France. So it's, uh, it is a planned community, very obviously. The um, people there were hardworking. They had one of the first grist mills in the area. People came from 50 miles around to get their grain ground into uh, flour. And the uh, town is still ongoing. Uh, Jasper County, St. Marie uh, is known for many things, our cork and pork. Uh, Wiresheim is known as a city of flowers back in Alsace flowers everywhere. We have a flower project. We have the, a, a flower baskets hanging down the main street with the petunias uh, flowing off of them. Uh, we like to think that we're carrying on the tradition. It all began with a forward-thinking priest and a few county farm advisors. They were very interested in electrification. They saw how, what was happening in towns around them. And there was no one bringing any electrification to the rural communities. This priest, Father Nell from Island Grove, was very aggressive and he wanted to get the electricity out to the rural communities. He met with the farm advisors he met with Jasper County advisor and an Effingham advisor. They met at the Jasper County Courthouse in 1936, and that was where the beginnings of the movement forward began. Effingham County was a little bit reluctant to become part of this. Um, they didn't know if it would go over. They didn't know if it would pay for itself. So Jasper County headed straight in full force and they said we're going to do this. They began getting their neighbors to sign up. You had to pay a five dollar membership fee and you had to pay a minimum of three dollars a month for electricity. Now five dollar membership fee back then is equivalent to about hundred and five dollars now and the three dollar membership is roughly eighty five dollars. So it's hard for us to understand that because they didn't have anything in their house that was electrified and they're going to pay three dollars a month and they didn't really know how they were going to use it and so um, it was a big leap of faith for that member to 
agree to pay the five dollars for the membership fee and the three dollars a month every month from then on from there things began to work very fast they um, hired contractors to build the lines out in the community and uh, that took some time of course but everything was done by hand um, there were no tools like we have today um, no trucks that um, dug the holes and held the poles and things like that so um, it was a very different time for them but in on Christmas Eve of 1938 there was 200 miles of line that was turned on that was went to 455 homes and those people must have been so excited <laughs> for that to happen on Christmas Eve. Like, I'm sure that was a Christmas to remember. Norris Electric covers eight counties currently and they have for many years. The board's most aggressive decision in recent years has been to rebuild all of their three-phase lines that still had copper wire up there. And um, we took that on a few years ago. Right now we have two-thirds of that complete and hopefully within the next few years we will have that done. That will be a great asset to our members. Um, we hope to ensure um, that their electricity is more reliable and we feel that this will ensure that Norris Electric is a viable business for many years to come. There has been a jewelry store located on our corner of the square since 1922. H.P. Lawler purchased the original structure that was built in 1912 and started his business with um, jewelry and watchmaking. And in 1948, he tore down the original structure and built the glass block building that we are currently working out of. The, the glass block building was built around a bank vault that H.P. Lawler had acquired. My parents, Arthur and Barbara Rao, purchased the jewelry store from Mr. Lawler in 1960. Over the decades, all eight of us Rao children have worked in the jewelry store. Uh, we've cleaned cases, we've swept floors, we've, we've taken out the trash. My early memories all include family. I can remember my uncle Harold working with dad and my uncle Dean working with dad. They all helped. My younger siblings, my early memories are them playing in the back room and my sister June asleep in the baby carriage. And when we did the renovations, we found that baby carriage. It's amazing to think about the number of watches that dad has repaired over the decades. It was, you know, the time of the wind-up watches with jewels and mainsprings, not batteries. Many can remember Art with his uh, third eye, his jeweler's loop. But mom, she was the key to the success of the building. His mom was the salesperson, the bookkeeper. She did the, the ordering and buying of all the merchandise. My youngest sister, June Rao Bierman, she purchased Rao's jewelry in 2016 from my father and she began renovations to make that business her own. My siblings and I, we were all very eager to help her with this. We were excited that Jasper County was gonna offer another generation of jewelry business. And after much work, the old was preserved and the new introduced. Our customers will express how great it is to see the Rao children working behind the counter together to build the business. I've heard different people mention that they bought their first watch off a of dad or they're still wearing a ring that they got for graduation 
that was purchased there at Rouse, and also wedding sets that were purchased way back when. They still have them. It always just warms my heart to know that our community remember my parents and uh, remember them fondly. The Rao family has been able to offer quality service and product with a hometown feel and a personal touch for 63 years on that same corner that HP started his business so many years ago. I've had a free pass to all the athletic events at Newton Community High School for the past 83 years. That, that may not be a record, but it's a pretty good average. I enjoyed my junior high uh, experience with uh, being able to go to the high school with my father all the time. He spent 31 years as janitor of the high school, so uh, I, when I got out of grade school and went to high school, well, I started running track and I ran, played basketball and I played football and, and uh, so I had my ID pass to get into all the events during high school. I graduated and I went to Eastern Illinois University up here at Charleston. Uh, when I would go home on Friday evening I, I could uh, go to the football games at Newton. Dad was still a janitor and he was a janitor there until uh, until I graduated from Eastern. When I graduated from Eastern, uh, a job became available at the Newton High School, so I went right back to the Newton High School teaching and I joined the faculty there. I started at the high school uh, in 62. Bob Stuckey, the English teacher that was announcing the home football games, uh, found out that I was going out after school and working with the football players. So the first home football game came along and he asked if I would come up to the press box and help him spot the first football games because I had been with the boys every, every evening after school. The third home game, Bob Stuckey didn't show up. And uh, the two of us were sitting up there, the man that run the scoreboard. He shoved the microphone over in front of me and he said, I don't think Bob's gonna show up. Why don't you announce the game? 1962, the third football game in the press box. And that lasted for 50 years. I spent 50 years announcing all the home football games. That's what did it for Levi. I've seen a lot of good football players, a lot of good teams go through the Newton Community High School. If I had to pick one out, I would say probably the year of 2004, 5, and 6 was a run that will probably never be equal. We went 20 Apollo Conference wins in a row, won three championships. There were some athletes that went through Newton High School, 2003, four, five, six. They had a lot of talent there, but the leader of that group, I feel like, was uh, Levi Richards. And uh, he, he caught a lot of balls, he caught a lot of, lot of uh, passes, he returned a lot of kickoffs for touchdowns and, and uh, scored a lot of points for the Eagles. Their junior year, they went to state and played for the state championship. And uh, they got beat by Addison Driscoll in the state championship the day after Thanksgiving in uh, 2005. When I, uh, I spent 50 years in the press box at home football games, and at the end of that 50 years, I retired in 2012. And lo and behold, the school and the Athletic Boosters Association gave me a lifetime pass to all football. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm still using that. The last 10 or 12 years, I've been using that pass. Sometimes I, uh, I close the uh, football uh, game, announcing the football game by just thanking the people for coming out and inviting them to come back uh, at the next home game to uh, enjoy Friday night under the lights with NCHS football at Newton, Illinois, the county seat of Jasper. Thank you and good drive safely going home and good night.
We're back in the WEIU TV studios. We ended that segment with a touchdown there from Tom Clark. Yay. Friday Night Lights for Newton. And uh, we are here for our latest Hour Story program. We're back in the studio. We're going to have some interviews in this segment. And uh, he and that whole first block chock full of history. So good. We had so many wonderful stories. What a way to kick off the night. I mean, we are super excited here in the studio. We are hoping you're excited there at home. We're hoping you're super excited and you're going to be giving us a call right now. We need someone to get the phones ringing. We need someone to call in and ask for a DVD or a Blu-ray tonight. Let's make some noise in this studio because this is a program about our latest hour story community, Jasper County. We have 15 stories in this program here, and this is a way, as you're seeing on the screen, what our DVDs and Blu-rays cost. And this is, could be a keepsake for you. If you know someone that's out of the area, this is a great way for them to uh, have a program from their, from their hometown or home community of Jasper County. Absolutely. WEIU is your local public broadcasting station, and this is what we do. We do this for the community. All of these storytellers have worked so hard to shine the light on Jasper County this evening with this special program, and we're offering it to you, and we need your local support. We need you to show them support tonight. Uh, let's recap the stories that we Yay! had, and there's our first phone call. Very good. First, first phone call of the night. We hope to have many more. Our stories in that block were the uh, origin of the Jasper Newton name. There, that story was done by Jason Werfel, who we'll talk to in a second. Mike Hartrick, who's also going to be interviewed, the founding of St. Marie. A Christmas to remember. That story is about Norris Electric. That story was told by Tammy Phillips. Our treasure on the corner by Jeannie Nix. That's about Rao Jewelry. And our last story that you saw there coming back. Uh, before we came back was Friday Night Lights at NCHS Football with Tom Clark. Just a, a, a great way to kick off this program and literally kick off because that last story was about football. It was. Go Eagles, right? That's Absolutely. what we're all about tonight, right? All night yes. Long, yes. Yeah, we're going to root them on throughout the show. We're going to root on Jasper County, but we need you to continue calling in. Call your friends, call your neighbors, call your coworkers, and let them know that Jasper County, this is our story, is on this evening, and you can get a copy of this special program to share with your friends and family as well. All right, we are back here in the studio, as we, you see on the screen, the graphic for the DVDs and Blu-rays, and we hope you're calling in. I'm now joined by Jason Warfel, who's told two stories in our program. He's got one more on Lowell Bales, but you kicked off the program, uh, Jason, uh, about the origin of Jasper and Newton. And before we came on the air, you, you told me there was a little bit of a theme here in this program, so I'll let you take it away. Yeah, so often it's probably, people probably wonder how a program like this comes together. Large part thanks to WEIU and your, your crew here uh, and the great sponsors that we have. The storytellers were uh, selected. None of the storytellers that I'm aware of compared notes, but as you go through this evening, you're going to hear a common theme, and it speaks to the values that we have in Jasper County and in Newton, and those values um, really touch on rallying together in good times and bad. And that's going to be a common theme throughout the night, and it's something that you're going to hear in story after story. Well, we've got five in the book so far. Thank you for starting it. We'll hear from you again with Lowell Bales. We'll turn it over now to Kian, who's with Mike Hartrick. All right. Well, I am over here with Mike, and I've got uh, Burl right here over my shoulder as well. <laughs> I don't want to cover him up. But, um, Mike, I want to uh, ask you a special question because you went somewhere very special here recently, and you were able to contribute part of that into this program, right? We did. Our family took a trip back to where our family came from in Alsace-Lorraine. Uh, Thirteen of us invaded the uh, countryside over there. And uh, it was a humbling experience, it really was. We, we wondered why our ancestors came after being over there. Uh, a lot of things came to light. Um, it's, a, it's a place that looks a lot like there, except there's no Alps in the distance. Right. And um, it is, uh, they're very hardworking people there. We feel like that the uh, people who are in St. Marie, Jasper County are also very hardworking people. How did it make you feel to be able to contribute part of that trip into this special program? It was neat. Uh, we had, when we planned the trip, we started about a year ago, and we had no idea this was coming, but it worked out very well. Uh, we were at the, you saw some pictures on there that we took over there, and there. We have a lot more if anybody wants to see them. <laughs> well, we're so glad that you are here tonight, and thank you so much for that contribution thank as you. well. Thank you. All right. So that was Mike Hartrick. And uh, Jason Werfel, we just talked to there. They, uh, they started the program with a lot of history there about Jasper County and Newton and obviously St. Marie. And that really can, unbelievable story that 
he had that trip before telling his story. So what a, what a, what a lead in for him. Yeah, very cool that it was good timing. I mean, that says a lot right there. I mean, the universe is coming together and we're going to make it work tonight, right? Absolutely. We also had in that last block uh, Christmas to remember Norris Electric. They've been serving Jasper County with power for 85 years there and uh, the origin of, of, of how they came to be. And then what an unbelievable story as we uh, hear the phones ringing. Rao Jewelry on the corner there, the southwest corner there in Newton. And Jeannie Nix, her family has been uh, running that business for about 60 plus years there. And great to see all those photos and the family story connected with the business. Absolutely. You know, when we do these shows, we really try to be part of the community. And I was down there last week picking up show pieces um, for the set. And mm -hmm. I stopped and I bought these earrings at Royal Jewelry. And it go. was just so cool to be able to go in there after I saw this story. And it, it really is just exactly what you see. So um, thank you for uh, being a part of my outfit tonight. <laughs> I, it feels cool. Um, a lot of other people we want to thank tonight as well. We'll get to the shout outs for the people who are calling in, but we want to thank our underwriters and those who uh, supported this program financially because without you, we would not be able to provide this program. So we want to thank the Embraer River Tourism Council, Apex Clean Energy, People's State Bank, EJ Water and the Illinois Arts Council, they have all contributed toward this program financially. And then also I want to give some shout outs to Jasper County Museum and Jennifer, Jennifer Hentishier. She uh, contributes to uh, putting that museum together and, and oversees that. The Newton Public Library and the librarian Jackie Holsapple, thank you so much. Uh, these paintings in the background are all four sides of the square in Newton and they came from the library. Uh, down there in and, and I also got some visuals for some of our stories from the museum as well so double contributor I guess absolutely <laughs> and Sarah Kincaid across over here uh, Chamber of Commerce down there in Jasper County and Leah Creador thank you so much for all of the help and the support and the promotion we could not have gotten the word out without you and all the set pieces um, I don't want to leave out these back here either because these are some showstoppers back here we have a watch party going on hello to the Ember River Eagles Club. Thank yep, you for watching and putting together a watch party tonight. These hang in that club down there, so thank Fantastic. you for that contribution as well. Nice segue because we had Tom Clark who ended our segment. We're going to talk to Tom in our next uh, <laughs> pledge block and 50 years of sitting high atop the football field there for the Newton Eagles. And uh, Tom has a lot to say. We look forward to getting a bonus comment from him later in the program. Yeah, so what a I'm great looking story. forward to it as well. He was a great storyteller, so he's. I'm sure he's got more to say. Yeah, so we are streaming tonight. We're on all kinds of different platforms. We hope that if uh, someone is outside of the area that you're reaching out to them to let them know that they can watch anywhere in the world tonight. Jasper County is streaming all over the place this evening. It's anywhere, anyhow, in this modern day of technology, it's streaming somehow, some way. So we're glad to be available for people to watch. Uh, let's go ahead and preview our next block of stories as we have uh, two people on the phones right now. Our next block of stories, we have M MVP Happy Holler. We have Ronnie Myers who's been answering the phones here. We have from Hunt City to Silver Screen. Mr. Burl Ives is in the studio with us, so you'll see, you'll hear a Burl Ives studio uh, story here in a second. Connecting the county, that's on EJ Water. Protecting the community's assets, that's a People's State Bank, and we'll end the block. Sandra Nichols back here told the story of the Newton Marching Eagles. You won't want to miss that one. No, that is a great story. I think that we need to put a challenge out when people see that story. If you were part of the Eagles, uh, marching band, we need you to call in and support Sandra. It's an amazing story. There's a lot of people that are showcased in that. And so we want you to be able to have a copy of that program and be able to keep that story as part of your collection. At nice home. little tribute to Miss D there as well. So that's what's coming up in our next block. Ken, anything else before we throw it back to this, the stories? Well, I want to let you know that we're not going anywhere. We're still alive here when we're back to the program. So if you still want to give us a call, you don't have to wait for the next break. You can go online as well at weiu.net and donate online and uh, request your DVD Blu-ray. If you need us to ship it to a special person for a gift, we can do that as well. We are here to serve you all through the evening. Jasper County, this is our story. What a great program. Let's go back to the stories now. This is Jasper County. This is our story. 